Welcome to part 32 of the Amateur Extra License Study. We are going over sub-element 7 Charlie, and we're still talking about filters. How are the capacitors and inductors of a low-pass filter PI network arranged between the network's input and output? That's a tough question, y'all. Read it again. How are the capacitors and inductors of a low pass filter pi network range between the network's input and output. I want to give you a little hint about how filters work. So I made some notes so I wouldn't mess this up. But capacitors pass alternating current. Capacitors block DC current. Inductors pass DC current and they reject alternating current. Resistors pass everything. Now the combination of those is what differentiates them. And there are so many types of filters, it's ridiculous. Now remember, on this 50 question test, you're only going to see one of these. Don't neglect them. But just know that you're only going to see one. So, reading this question again now, capacitors and ductors of a low-pass filter PI network arranged between the network's input and output. How are they arranged? So, this is a low-pass. So, what did we say low-pass might be? Anywhere close to DC, okay? So, most likely... The capacitors for a low pass are going to be between the input and ground. Another capacitor is connected between the output and ground. And the inductor is connected between the input and the output. So let's go give you a little picture of that. This is a low pass. Notice that the inductor from input to output, that is a low pass. Inductors are able to pass those low frequencies. As the frequency increases, that low pass is going to eventually have a very high, that, that inductor is going to have a high resistance. It's going to block it. Uh, not high resistance. It'll be a high inductive reactance. So. AC resistance. Okay, so a capacitor is connected between input and ground, output and ground, and the inductor is connected between the input and the output. Inductors are in in between input and output in series are low pass. Keep that in mind. Hopefully the differentiation between what a, an inductor can do, whether it's in series or parallel, a capacitor can do in series and parallel, and knowing that resistors pass it all, hopefully that can help you. What is the frequency response of a T network with a series capacitor? That's your hint, series capacitor. What do we say capacitors do? They pass AC. So that would be a high pass. Alternating current, just think of the AC, alternating current is a high pass. Anything down to DC is going to be a low pass. What is the frequent response of a T network with series capacitors and a shunt inductor? And that's going to be high pass. So let's see, do I have, this is the pi filter right here. Notice it looks like a pi. It looks like the pi. Is this the one with the, no, nope, this isn't the one with the picture of the pi at the top. The T filter looks just like a T. So that's the difference. This is a high pass filter because it allows AC current to flow, but is going to block DC. What is the purpose of adding an inductor to a PI network to create a PI-L network? Now, a PI-L network is a PI network 
with another inductor, and that is greater harmonic suppression. That is your answer, greater harmonic suppression, because you're adding more filtering. That's the best I can give you there. How does an impedance matching circuit transform a complex impedance to a resistive impedance? It cancels the reactive part, so it's canceling the reactive part, and changes the resistive part to a desired value. That is going to be the answer. Impedance matching is taking that complex impedance and turning it into resistive, so you have to cancel the reactive part. Which filter type has ripple in the passband and a sharp cutoff? Ripple in the passband, a Chevy Chev. And let's switch over to the LC program really quick. I have a Chevy Chev pulled up here. This is LC, E-L-S-I-E. -E. It's a free program you can download. And you can build all kinds of filters and families and looking at the schematic of the Chevy Chev now we go look at the plot of the Chevy Chev and you can see in the passband and the passband is anywhere from negative three decibels and up that's the passband so this is the passband approximately right here um, when you find negative three decibels so somewhere right in there, you can see down at the bottom, you can see uh, negative 2.49. So that's about the negative 3. You see this ripple in the passband. That is characteristic of a Chevy Chev filter is, is ripple in the passband. All right, let's get back to the questions. Uh, we'll transition back. Elsie, if you want to check out filters and look at them, you can just make some and um, experiment with it, and that can give you an idea about how filters work. So a Chevy Chev has a ripple in the passband and a very sharp cutoff. That sharp cutoff is sort of supposed to look like a brick wall, and we'll get to look at those in just a minute. What are the characteristics of an elliptical filter? So an elliptical filter has another name, but it's extremely sharp cutoff with one or more notches in the stop band. So let's see, I, I've, I've got a lot of stuff uh, pulled up here and I cannot, okay, we'll go to Elsie. Uh, there, there's a lot going on here. I'm sorry for the delay. So an elliptical filter is also known as a cower filter. And I want to be sure to select the correct one. I think this is it. Open. So this is what the cower filter has in the center. It's an inductor and a capacitor usually put together. But if we look at the plot, you can see that it has a nice flat pass band, but it's, it's got some dips here on the edges. This is elliptical. And this is your, uh, I don't even know what that is supposed to be right there, but there's a, this is your pass band. This is your brick wall. That's what it's supposed to look like. And this is your stop band right here. So this has a name, and we'll learn that in just a minute. But that is the frequency response of that filter. So getting back to the exam itself, the elliptical filter has extremely sharp cutoff with one or more notches in the stop band. So you saw those notches which describes a Pi L network. That is a Pi network with additional output series inductor. Now we just went over that just a minute ago. The purpose of adding that inductor to a Pi network to create that Pi L network is greater harmonic suppression. And it is because 
that Pi network has an additional output series inductor. So there's two questions on that Pi L network. Which of the following is most frequently used as a bandpass or notch filter in VHF and UHF transistors, uh, transceivers? And that is a helical, helical filter. And I did have a picture. That's what I pulled up here. This is the helical filter. Helical filter. You can see the helix right here. Those are, that it's just a winding, and then it has adjustable. Oh my gosh, I forgot the name of them. I, I read about these, and I'm totally not. I mean, this is this is new, but it has to do with the the cavity. And the, uh, uh, let's just go look at some more. Uh, this is what a helical looks like right here in the reels. And it's just insane how somebody said, hey, I'm just going to shove this in there and it's going to work. So which of the following is most frequently used as a band pass or notch filter? It's a helical filter. When I Googled this to begin with, it took me straight to DigiKey and at DigiKey, you can just look at the different frequencies of helical filters. What is a crystal lattice filter? A filter for low level signals made using quartz crystals. And I found you a picture and a schematic of one of these. This is an eight pole filter and it uses crystals. And I think at the top of this, it actually shows you the circuit equivalent. Remember, a crystal has a circuit equivalent of an RLC with a C a capacitor shunt across it, across it. So isn't that pretty neat that it's finally coming to where you can actually see it being used? It's all in one little crystal package. So... A crystal lattice filter is for low-level signals made using quartz crystals. It's not a power supply. Okay, so there's your answer. All right, which of the following filters is used in a 2-meter band repeater duplexer? And that is a cavity filter now let's go talk about something that just will blow your mind I, I mean i knew that a cavity filter was just a cavity who came up with this that it just uses a cavity it's insane look at this i mean i get excited about that kind of stuff so a cavity filter just uses a cavity and it resonates inside of there and I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away by a cavity filter. And this is what they look like when you buy them. It's sealed. It's got silver plating on the outside. I mean, they are really, really beautiful pieces of work. That's a cavity filter. And that is what's used for your duplexer. A cavity filter can also just be used as a filter. Um, but more commonly, they're used as a duplexer because they can have two or three uh, RF connectors. Which of the following measures a filter's ability to reject signals in adjacent channels or adjacent frequencies? That's the shape factor. And I have that shape factor. It, this is one of them. That is the ideal, perfect world shape factor. This is what a more common shape factor would look like. You can see that there's some ripple, there's some stop band ripple over here. And this, the same pictures just on the website. Um, it's somebody's blog, they blogged about it, but it's the same thing. See ripple in the stop band, ripple in the pass band. But this is that filter shape factor. You want, you want, a, a very brick wall and no ripple in the pass band. That's the shape factor. So this has all been filters. If, um, if my excitedness and getting lost in the moment caused some confusion, go back and watch it again. Uh, the, you know, the ARRL does have some pretty good books on this kind of stuff. 
if you get the um a double r l uh i can't remember the name of the book now dag nabbit i wish i hadn't even mentioned it but you can get their book on everything and it has some pretty good explanations of every section that we've gone over and that's if you really want to go in depth either before or after you pass your amateur extra licensing exam keep up with the stuff if you if you can because it's pretty neat stuff and there's a lot of tinkering if you have time to tinker which i believe that the amateur radio licensing uh structure is to push you into more levels of tinkering the amateur extra is really a lot about of experimentation uh, if you remember back from the technician we're supposed to be advancing the art of electronics and radio so you may not be participatory or participate in every single event that you have been forced to study up to this point but this right here, these filters can be fun to mess with. Uh, while we're at it, uh, if you if you want to continue to watch at this point, I'll show you some um, things that I've been messing with uh, real quick. Uh, the 40 meter band pass that somewhat works. I had to tinker with these values, something serious to make a band pass that would work even in the least bit. This is what it was supposed to look like. Now, the Q, what happened is the Q of my parts were not what I had in this particular program. And you know what? Now that now that we're there, I, I can't even find. Is it, uh, OK, forget it. I can't <laughs> cannot find it. There's a spot where you can, there we go, analysis. See, see the Q of the inductors and capacitors? I didn't have that with my parts. So it didn't turn out exactly as what it looked like right there. So at any rate, uh, that's a little show and tell at the end. I, I do like to tinker with things. That is um, how this whole website of ham test trivia came along was i was just experimenting with some programming and wanted to see can i convert these tests to a database and it didn't take long and next thing you know here you go i've got something that i can use to help you i hope in your study so i'm robbie w1rcp if you have enjoyed the uh just the realness of Robbie being Robbie and helping you out, trying to explain to the best of my knowledge and what I can find on the web, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to help me out. It's free. And if you don't want to receive notifications, you don't have to. You don't have to click that bell. I'm not pushing this on you. You can go once you subscribe and turn that bell gray with the slash through it. Uh, but that sub really does help me out. Uh, it shows that you care. It shows that I'm being helpful. It's a little bit of feedback, to use an electronics term. I'm W1RCP, though. This is my channel, and I hope that I have helped at least one person. It'll make it all worth it. Y'all have a great evening, 73.